I just can't wait to plot these. First up, it's time to mow the lawns. This is not my favorite thing to do. I know some people love mowing the lawns, but to me, I just think about all the potential space for gardens <laughs> rather than spending my time mowing the lawns. But it is nice to have some grass and especially for the dog, but one day this may change. I just went to try and buy some grapevines for my new project happening in the front yard um, and I did not buy, it, buy any grapevines. I for some reason just can't decide, I can't commit to varieties, I want to get uh, two or three varieties, a green one and a red one, maybe a black one and uh, yeah I don't know why I'm making this harder than it should be but I did buy some fruit trees so I'm going to share those with you. These are things that have been on my list for so long and I'm so so excited to have found them and I just can't wait to plant these, to grow these. So I'm going to pop them in pots for now because I don't exactly have a home for them in the garden and that's what I do with most of my fruit trees anyway is just keep them in pots until I find the perfect home for them and it's the right season. So um, at the moment it's the middle of winter so these are tropical fruit trees that need a little bit more care so I'm happy to be putting these in pots where I can look after them until they're a bit more established um, and I've got a whole bunch of other random things that need to be done I have other plants that I need to pot up I need to move things around it's all happening let's go this big pot here I'm going to plant a Cape Gooseberry in it. I normally have these popping up in my garden from self-seeded because I've been growing these for quite a few years but I think they're shaded out now in the spot so there's none popping up um, so I had to get another one and I'm gonna grow it in a pot this time. Cape Gooseberry is also often called a ground cherry and it's just a really fun one to grow for some nice little garden snacks. They are really delicious. So to plant this Cape Gooseberry I'm just gently taking it out of the pot and it has been in there a little while you can see the roots are quite bound together so it's important to loosen these off very gently so that the roots can then spread out once they're planted in the pot and they're not all tightly bound um, and wrapped up together so gently tapping away some of the soil will help loosen up those roots. And while I'm at it, I may as well fill up this other pot. I got these pots free on Marketplace and I've been meaning to plant something in them. All right, so now I'm gonna go on a bit of a rescue mission to um, dig up a strawberry plant that is in the food forest style garden and it's getting shaded out. I can pop that in the pot. Okay, so down here, I have planted over the years heaps of different things as understories and um, ground covers, but as things start to grow and mature, there's a whole lot more shade. So some of those things um, have been moved. One I just noticed is not gonna get enough light is the strawberry. So we're gonna dig that up, pop that in a pot. My gardens are never complete. I'm constantly adding to them, moving things, adjusting, and just going with the flow of what's happening in the garden. I love it. It's just a continuous piece of art, um, a canvas for me to play with. So I'll probably get a few more to fill up this pot, but for now it's got a new home and it can actually get some light. It's time to harvest some of these beautiful worm castings. I have not been putting any scraps into the top tray and all the worms have moved down so now it is ready to be removed and used in the garden. So I'm going to mix this in with some of my soil that I've already got going to add extra nutrients. Oh, there's worm castings on my camera. Um, the three new additions that I have got is um, I have a sour sop. 
so I, that is something that I've been wanting for ages and that is sort of like a large custard apple really I guess um, so the fruits on this are huge once it gets going so I'm really excited to get this one and I'm going to pot this one up first because I've only got one large pot at the moment I've got a few other um, trees and pots that I am planning on putting in the garden so hopefully I'll be able to get that done and I'll be able to reuse those pots and I won't have to get any more um, so we've got the sour sop and then this one which is similar to the sour sop is Relinia so this is a Brazilian custard apple um, and it's also called the is it like lemon meringue fruit or something um, people say it tastes like lemon meringue so I'm excited to try that and last but definitely not least this is one that I've probably been looking for for the longest time and that is a star fruit so um, this one is the Thai night and um, these grow really well in Perth so I know quite a few people that are growing these very successfully um, so that's exciting because I've always wanted to grow these coming from um, a colder climate in New Zealand being over here in Perth I really want to lean into all of these exciting things that I can grow here we are very blessed with having a wide range of um, plants that will grow in, in our climate even though we get super super hot summers uh, now that I've got some more established trees I can start to create little microclimates and find homes where these will um, survive the heat so again this one is going to go into a pot as well until I find that special home for it um, but yeah let me know if you're growing any of these in your own gardens I'm so so excited and I can't believe I just got another three fruit trees <laughs> Oops. so the soil I've gotten here I recently dug a big hole out the front for my new pond and so this soil here is a mix of my sandy soil just my natural soil as well as over the years I have added improvements to that when it was in the because it was in the garden bed out there so it has got some compost in it some sandy soil and then I've added some extra compost some worm castings um, so it's a good mix of everything it's going to be free draining with it with some nutrition in there as well so I'm going to pop this in the pot I've got which I think is roughly a 50 litre, 52 litre pot that I'm gonna put the sour sop in for now. So let's get this planted. Again, with this one, I'm trying to release some of those roots from being tightly bound and wrapped around. And sometimes it's easy to just blast a little bit of the dirt out with a hose um, and some water and just loosen them up a bit. Because if trees and plants are uh, potted up or planted with really tightly bound roots, they can it can restrict the growth and they can end up staying really small, stunted or just not really growing at all which is obviously not what we're after. We want lots of growth, lots of root production so we can get strong, healthy plants. Today I'm taking some cuttings from my elderberry or elderflower tree to propagate some new plants. I've already done this and it was really successful. They grow so quickly and easily from cuttings. So I thought why not do a few more um, because I'd like to let some extra light in for the lower plants during winter anyway. So to make the cuttings, I just use the semi hardwood, not the really thick old wood and not the nice, not the young green wood. Um, somewhere in the middle and just take a bunch of cuttings remove three quarters of the leaves and any leftover scraps and leaves and green material always goes straight back into this garden and then I pop them in a jar of water to send off roots you can plant them straight into soil but I don't have any soil and pots ready right now and I like to see the roots forming first plus they look really nice on the bench for a while as well I 
I recently discovered that there is a whole lot of leftover pavers behind the shed which have been left there from the previous owner and so today I'm just going to take some of these and add them to the garden out the front um, as some stepping stones for the compost bin. have got a bunch of mulch that I need to put around the gardens too. I've, my list has been sitting a bit dormant and I have been quite overwhelmed with everything that I need to get done. So I'm ticking a lot of these jobs off this weekend and laying some of that mulch around the garden bed. This is pea straw mulch which provides some nutrition, some nitrogen as it breaks down and I'm just adding it straight on top of the other older stuff that I've got there um, so that I can then pop my pavers in and create a little bit of a walkway to the compost so little plants and little seeds don't get stood on. My neighbour has been using this compost bin which is amazing, her scraps go straight in there and then we share um, the produce and food and lots of stuff. And I probably will move these around again. I do want to build a vertical structure in here for my pumpkin patch which I mainly just use this garden in summer to grow pumpkins so I'd like a, something vertical to grow them on uh, so like I said I'll probably move these around but to be honest I just wanted to look busy while my partner was building my other project for me in the front yard. Now the asparagus fronds are starting to die off which means it's time to cut them back. I popped these straight into the compost bin. I love having compost bins right near all my gardens so it's really handy to use and because I've got the mulch there ready it's a great time for me to put the asparagus to bed, to put fresh mulch on top and let them go dormant before they pop back up in spring. And I always wet down the mulch afterwards, it helps it stay in place because this mulch does like to fly around in the wind. 